Welcome to Boards and Gear. The title of this segment is Fundraising. Nancy, why is that important? Well, we all know why fundraising matters, but why does it matter that the board gets involved? It grows the community that is supporting the organization, it builds trust, and it makes sure that the fundraising that's happening is done in a professional and ethical manner. Let's go to our experts and hear what they have to say about fundraising. My name is Rebecca Zanata. I'm president of RJZ Connections and a senior consultant with the Ostara Group. And this is Susan. Hi, I'm Susan Howlett. I'm a teacher, a trainer, consultant, an author, and facilitator. And we're here to talk about boards and fundraising. You know, a lot of board members don't even know that they're supposed to participate in fundraising. Mm -hmm. And when they find out that they have to, they don't really understand why, and they sure don't want to. No, they don't. They're scared. So there are three reasons why it's essential for board members to participate mm -hmm. in fundraising. One is that our organizations have been given nonprofit status, and that's because we're holding the trust of the community. We uh, owe our accountability to the community that we serve, to the public, and the donors who have given us money. And it's also important for board members to be giving joyfully ge and generously and asking other people to join them because if the board members who are governing the organization aren't giving, why should anyone else? Right. And I think our donors actually really love hearing from our volunteers and our board as well. They like hearing from the staff, but the success of a board member or a volunteer calling to get an appointment or a meeting with a donor is actually much more successful than a staff member. So the idea of having board members know how to fundraise and be comfortable with it is really an asset to the organization's fundraising set success for sure. I think a lot of people are really surprised when they find out what fundraising looks like yeah. for board members because it's not what they thought. They think that fundraising is about asking people for money, but it mm -hmm. really isn't. There's so many other things that board members can do that are strategic and effective. One of them is to help create a culture of philanthropy across right. the organization so that everybody feels like there's a, an attitude of gratitude everywhere and that people are being really welcomed to our gatherings and they feel seen and heard and they feel like they're part of something. So the board members can help create this culture of gratitude that pervades the organization. I like that. The second thing is that we should focus, especially board attention, on retention of current and recently lapsed donors rather than acquisition. Yep. I think our culture is addicted to acquisition and we spend so much of our energy and resources trying to get new donors when what we really know from recent research is that we need to keep the people we've got and retrieve the people that we've lost in the recent past. So if board members could focus more on keeping the current people happy mm -hmm. and getting older people back that gave before, that's way more important than bringing in new donors. And the third thing that I think board members need to understand is their essential role in fundraising is taking the people who are already in our tent, as it yeah. were, and connecting them more deeply to the work so that they feel like they're having an authentic experience of the mission. Yeah, and I think storytelling is a key piece to that culture, right, is the idea of knowing the organization's story and also your story as a board member. So when working with, uh, with boards, really looking at what's the story, right, the story of the organization, so what's the mission, what's the goals, what are the impact, and then what's your story? Do people want to know why you serve on the board? And so the idea, if you can share the story of the organization and your story about how you're connected, and everybody's story is different, and that's okay, because we have a bunch of different donors that can connect with different board members in that way. I think a third thing, too, is that board members need to know how to elicit other people's yes. stories from them and find out how are they connected to our work. Right. Because sometimes we go off talking about one aspect of the organization and when that person's really interested in another aspect. Right. So I think that board members can do a lot better fundraising by asking other people how they connect with yeah. our work. And I think we also need to show our, our you know, model the way. And I think if we think about the donor cycle and we think about cultivation, solicitation, and stewardship, and we think, we think that we spend most of our time with donors in cultivation. And then that solicitation piece, like you said, the ask, is very small piece of our work with donors. And then the other piece being stewardship, which is where you get to thank them and you get to share the impact and share the gratitude. And so really when a board member says, I don't like to fundraise, if you can explain that all three of those pieces are part of fundraising, then you can't really say you don't like fundraising because you do potentially like to call and thank people. You do potentially like to take people out to coffee and get to know them and share stories. But the idea of really connecting fundraising to much bigger than just the ask. 
So I've seen a lot of board members really be successful when it meant engaging the a potential donor in the work of the organization. Like one of my clients had a uh, major donor prospect come in and sit in the middle of a symphony orchestra while it was rehearsing just to see what it felt like to be in there. Right. Another board member took somebody on a hike for a trails mm -hmm. organization and that was cultivation, that was good fundraising. So I think that there are a lot of ways for board members to participate that have nothing to do with the ask. In fact, I see a lot of organizations when I say to people, so what's your fundraising strategy? They name, oh, we've got an event here and a right. direct mail appeal here and then whatever. And they're all, those are transactions. Yes. That's not fundraising. Those are occasions upon which we ask people for money. But that's not what fundraising is about. Right. Fundraising is that whole cycle of before yep. and after. And I think that when people realize that they can be having an organic conversation with someone and in the middle of it say, you know, I see your eyes light up when yeah. you talk about our work. Do you want to help us out with that? That was the ask, and it's in the middle of having a conversation about what we do. Right. You mentioned events, which I think are, you know, our organizations do events. And if you're a small community, then events are a way for you to introduce people to your organization, to acquire new donors, but also to celebrate your work. And I think having intention with your event is really important. Like so what? Setting purpose, right? So what is the purpose of the event? Is it a fundraiser? Is it a celebration? Is it education? And actually spending time with your board or your staff, whoever's planning the event, and actually have a purpose. And then involve the board in that work. So once we know who's in the room, maybe we say, hey, Susan, you know, Sarah and Jim are going to be there tonight, and we'd love for you to talk to them about X, Y, and Z, and then come back and tell me as the staff member the next day. And then we begin to sort of make that event intentional rather than just a place where people come mm -hmm. and leave but there's intentional conversation happening during the event. Yeah, and I really like it when people have other goals besides fundraising when they're doing their event. Like maybe it's just about retrieving lapsed donors, or Great maybe idea. it's turning volunteers into donors, or mm -hmm. clients into donors, or people who have given you $100 into monthly donors. But we, we always just have one big overarching goal, which is raise money, right. and that's not right. really helpful. So the clearer we can get about the goal yeah. of whether it's a, um, a give big kind of effort or yep. a an event or a direct mail appeal, we need to be really clear about what the goal is because then everybody relaxes and they don't. Right. there's not so much pressure. And having clear follow-up too, right? That after the event there's a plan and there's a way to thank people and there's a next step for the donors, mm -hmm. right? And like that's coming in for a tour yes, or something. Yes, exactly. And, and like you said, the hike, right? If you come to something and then sharing, hey, we get out and we talk about things on the trail and I'd love for you to come that with me so that you mm -hmm. actually leave the event with a next step. Boards resist fundraising a lot of times, and I think it's because they haven't really been engaged in the governing of the organization. Mm -hmm. If they have helped craft the mission and the vision and set the strategic goals and created a budget that's going to achieve those goals, then they're going to be on fire to raise the money to support those things, but we often keep them from having those rich conversations on our behalf. Yeah, and I think it really is about the conversations and the relationships and, and getting the board members to understand that they can have an authentic conversation, talk about their values, talk about their beliefs, talk about their experiences, and connect those to the organization. And that begins the, 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 fa the fascination and the, the beautiful relationship around fundraising with the organization. I think we just need to remember that it's about finding people who are aligned with our mission and values. Yes. That's who our prospects are. You know, a friend of mine told me one time that if our board members are asking people to volunteer, they should model volunteering. And if they're asking other people to give us in-kind gifts of goods or services, they should practice that so people see it. And if we're asking other people to give us money, the board members need to model giving and asking joyfully so that other people will want to follow that lead too. After hearing from Susan and Rebecca, I feel like I have a much broader idea of what fundraising is. So what should we do next? Well, there's some key tools you might put in place. A case for support. A list of your current donors or members if you're a member organization. Your budget uh, and creating a fundraising plan that supports the budget. Some next steps you might think about are describe many ways that board members can be involved in the fundraising cycle. Look at the organization's diversification of funds and build out a plan to keep them diversified. And build into the board experience time for storytelling. So money is the fuel that drives our mission. So let's get out there and fundraise.